Come on. Come on. Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on now. Dig me. One and only Steve Harvey. Got what? Radio show. Man, what you doing with it? Trying to do the very, very best I can with it. I really am, you know. I get tired sometimes on, on my journey. I'm, I'm not going to kid you. Um, um, trying to make something out of yourself is, 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 is a task. Um, if, if you want to attempt to do something and, and, and understand going in that, that the, if the thing you're trying to do is to improve yourself, to better your position, to better your relationship, your family, anything, you're trying to be a better you, you're trying to make more money, you're trying to get it together, you're trying to change. If any of those things are in your hopes and dreams, know this right here. You are about to face some challenges, but you might as well go ahead anyway and face those challenges because if you don't, you have a whole nother set of challenges to face. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing thing, man, how people sit around and they watch other people strike out to become successful. And they sit in the stands, watching these people play out these games, and they and they and they criticize, they boo, they laugh at their efforts and everything, and they talk about the failures. He missed that game when he shot, boy, he sucked. Man, he did this. He ain't worth that. I hear people who sit in stands, who criticize people who are out there on the playing field. Now, when you're on the playing field, you have a set of challenges in front of you. You're going to be open to crit criticism. You're going to be open to ridicule. You're going to be talked about when you don't know the people who are talking about you. Now, Here's the upside to being the player on the field that's facing all the challenges, the criticisms, the laughing, the joke, the being talked about. He has something going for him. This person, boy, woman, child, girl, man, has an opportunity to win. They have an opportunity to win. And in the game of life, just because you lose one of the games or you lose one of the matches, it don't mean you've lost. You don't get put out. You keep playing. And when you're playing, here's the upside. You have the opportunity to win. And But guess what? You're going to win some of the matches. You're going to win some of the points. You're going to make some of the dunks. You're going to hit some of them over the wall. You're going to hit some out the park. You're going to score some goals. You will. If you're playing the game, here's the problem with the people who don't face criticism, who nobody boos or cheers for, who sits in the stands and knows neither victory nor defeat. Those people, without realizing it, are facing a set of challenges also. And the challenges they facing is how I'm going to live with myself. What I'm going to do now? What direction am I going in? Where am I going to live? Wonder what job will hire me. Wonder if I can get paid for criticizing. Oh, woe is me. I can't find the purpose in my life. And man, I'm just waking up in a state of confusion. I don't know what to do. Now, let me ask you something. Which one of them set of challenges you'd rather be faced with? Because if I'm on the flow playing, if I'm on the field playing, if I'm out on the court playing, then guess what? I got a chance at winning. But guess what I'm doing every day while I'm playing? I'm strategizing. I'm waking up with a purpose. I'm waking up trying to come up with another angle. I'm in pursuit of a goal every single day versus 
the people in the stands who know neither victory nor defeat. Get in the game. Face the challenges. Better yourself, better your wife, better your children, better your condition, better your employment status, better your job, better your career. Take a shot. Come on, man. What you waiting on? Because the alternative is to watch other people play the game. You know what I just do sometimes? Sometimes I just, I get Forbes magazine or Money magazine, or sometimes I still grab a copy of the Rob Report. I just flip through it just to see. Get, I used to get these this book called Unique Homes. Unique Homes is a magazine that just has a lot of extravagant houses that's on sale across the country, across the world. I used to just flip through, man. Let me just see, man, what the people that's playing the game out there doing. Stop watching other people become successful when you could very easily be you if you make the decision. But when you make the decision to become successful, get ready for a series of challenges. I think it's more difficult not to accept the challenge. I think it's for me. This is just for me. It may not be the case for you. For me, I think it's far more difficult to wake up and just see how life going to go today. Because, man, it could just deal you any kind of hand today. You understand? I, I don't like, you know, spades. Let, let's talk a card game, for example. The game of spades, really, man, it ain't a whole lot you can do if you don't get no spades. Really? It's a little couple of little strategies you got to do, but you can have all this ace, king, queen, diamond all you want, but, man, you ain't got no spades. They cutting them. You're in trouble. Be it whist, different game. You can create what's in your hand. You got dealt a hand, too. But you can create a hand. You can call a trump. You can make diamonds your spades. You can make hearts or clubs your spades. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. You can do something with it. It's a different game, man. I, you, you can strategize. I would rather have a say-so in my life than to wake up every day and just see how it's going. I think it's more difficult to not accept the challenge to be something than it is to accept the challenge to be something. I think it's more difficult to sit around and not be nothing. I think it's harder to watch everybody life going somewhere but mine. I think it would be very difficult for me to sit here and hear them talking about other people and never mention my name. It would be difficult for me to see everybody rise and getting promotions except me. I, that would be difficult for me. I, it may not be for you, but for me it would be quite challenging. I would rather accept the challenge of making something out of my life than to sit there and criticize those and then watch and see how my life just may go. Okay? Just a thought today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey everybody, we know there are a ton of podcasts out there. Well, we have one we would love for you to check out. It is called the Pen Pals Podcast with Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. We are both stand-up comedians, we're actors, we're writers, but now, most of all, we are your pen pals. Every single episode, we get two letters that we read from our listeners, our new pen pals. It can be about anything going on in their life, and sometimes we're also joined by guests like Will Ferrell. I'm going to bring you up in front of the group and I'm going to punch you as hard as I can in the stomach. Rose Byrne. Welcome this is to West it. Hollywood. We keep it clean. Judd Apatow. If you yeah. use like Beats by Dre, is that mm -hmm. considered Andy Manwood? Conan O'Brien. I'm just showing you that my mind is quick if not that funny. And Mandy Moore. We're all crossing the line together. Listen to the Pen Pals podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sincerely, your new Pen Pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. It is morning time. It is the beginning of a new day. It's a new opportunity, a great chance, a blessing to be here yet alive again. I don't know about you, but I'm so sure glad about that, boy. Oh, man. Give it to me, God, because I sure appreciate it. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Make no mistake about it. Shirley Strawberry. It's Friday, Steve Harvey. Good morning. Carla Pharrell. Never mad on a Friday. What's up, crew? Junior. 
Oxtail seven ninety nine a pound this weekend. Just throwing that. <laughs> Ooh, I can make some hot Man, yes. <laughs> Dan Anthony Brown. Mm. You know what, Steve? After putting in a full week of work, it's nothing like reaching a Friday. Oh. Thank you so much that we're here. We made it. Oh, wow. I love that. Mm. When I grow up, I want to be. You know. <laughs> That food was one day this week, today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> King of Pranks. Friday night. Just got paid. Friday, yeah. baby. Yeah. Friday. Yeah, Ooh, Friday, yeah. you know, Friday is good, but Friday used to be kind of scary when you was in school. Cause that's when you get your ass whooped at three on Friday. You know, you can get your did. you can get jumped sure on did. Friday at school. Uh, that didn't happen. Came out Fridays. Mm-hmm. Fridays. You got your ass whooped on Monday, Steve? When you got your ass? Well, you know, I got the lights on a lot of fights on Friday trying to help your little sorry ass. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, I got to go down here and help his ass. It's all right. That's what you were supposed to do. You were supposed oh, to do but it wasn't a good look. I'm that. ten years older than him. It ain't a good look. Mm-hmm. He on the playground. I'm over there. I'm 18 trying to slow this ass whooping down. Well, Back then, you could hit the eight-year-old boy. Hit him. And your nephew. Why? Why? I don't understand. I'm Why? To protect you. Well, I'm That's too old to be out there jumping on them kids. Yeah, you yeah. grown. You 18. <laughs> but I'm saying, why did they want to jump on Tommy, though? Oh, no, there he is right there. Because he was clever. They hated clever kids. They didn't Thank like you. That's what Thank it was, you, King Jay. Tommy. Clever. Thank you, Jay. Clever. <laughs> All I know, Shirley, that I was getting jumped on. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad Jay is here today, one of his work days. Yeah. To, what, no, to what's the difference the between jumped on and picked on? What is the difference between jumped on and picked on? Jumped on is physical. Jumped on is, yeah. Yeah. Is, the jumped on is two or yeah. three people <laughs> hitting picked you. Picked on is words. <laughs> jumped on yeah. is physicality. Picked yeah. on is your mama. <laughs> Your mama jokes. Yeah, the picked on is your mama jokes. Jumped on is three or four get, people. Can you get picked on and jumped on at the same time? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Well, the picking on usually occurs, occurs. before the jumping. Yes, yes it's an order to it. Yeah, that's the lead off. They don't jump on you, then pick on you. They pick on you, and depending on how you're taking it, that turns into a whooping. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I only got jumped yeah. on, Jay, after I said some stuff he told me to say. say <laughs> right. Of course. Thank right you. Yeah, man. I told him to say it if he could back it up. I didn't tell him to go down there that day. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll <laughs> hear on. from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time to start the morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Nav? Shirley, it is PSC. PSC. That is is prostate checker. Let's go, Cat Dog. PSC. Prostate checker. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, a Roger. This is Roger. Hi, my name is Greg. I'm a PSC. Uh, I got you on my schedule. I'm supposed to come by your house tomorrow morning at about 7.15. I just want to give you a call and uh, give you a heads up and let you know we will be there about 7.15. From my understanding, you go to work you at... Say uh, you're a, oh, you say you're a who? I'm a PSC, sir. I'll be okay. there I'll be there tomorrow. I got you on my schedule uh, for Monday morning, and I'll be there uh, at least about 7.15. From my understanding, you go to work at 7.30, and uh, my procedure's only going to take a couple minutes, but I wanted to What's just, just kind of give a friendly call and let you know that I will be by there tomorrow morning. What's a PSC? PFC? What you say, a PSC? PSC, sir. PSC. I will be there tomorrow. I've been in business uh, probably for the last, uh, I guess, about 13, 14 years now. What is PSC, specialist? What you do? Oh, you're not, I'm sorry, you're not familiar? Now, how you got me on the schedule? I ain't trying up for nothing. Oh, I got you on my list here. I don't know who put you on here, but you, it's been paid for and everything for me to come by and, and do my job. And like I said, it'll only take me a couple minutes, and I'll have you on your way. How you uh, get my number? Say, say again? How did you get my phone number? Sir, everything I have, I got I got 20 stops tomorrow, and I got you scheduled as uh as my uh, as my first stop tomorrow morning. I don't know. I got your phone number. I do have your address. Are you at <laughs> Drive? Yeah, that's my address, but I'm not scheduled for nobody to come to my house in the morning. I got to go to work in the morning. I'm not going to be here. 
Right, right. My understanding, well, you, from my understanding, you pull out about 7.30, and I'm going to get there at 7.15. Like I said, my, the, the, you know, the procedure only takes about two, three minutes, and, and well, I'll be on my way. Who told you about every, all my information? You know, when I leave home and everything, who is this? Like I say, my name is Greg. I'm a, I'm a PSC, and I'll be there. Okay, you said that already. I, you, you'll see me tomorrow. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to give you a friendly call here on Sunday and let you know that I'll be there uh, I'll be there about 7.15, and we'll get you taken care of, and then I'll let you get on your way to work. You still ain't telling me what, I'm supposed, what you're supposed to be doing. Sir, a PSC is PSC. I'm a prostate checker, and what I'll be doing is coming in and checking your prostate tomorrow. Oh hell no! Nah. You ain't coming here to check my prostate. I get my prostate checked by my doctor. Who who are you talking about coming to check my prostate? Not at my house. You ain't coming to check my Sir, prostate. You, I, and, and you know what? I get this all the time. I get a lot of people that that are in denial. A lot of men that 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 claim that they. Man, they've my got prostate it. is fine. I really? had my prostate checked just the beginning of this year, man. You don't need to come to my house. Checking my prostate. So oh, a lot of people, a lot of men are in denial saying that they got it checked and they got it. And a lot of times we find out they haven't. And, and and there has to be a reason. If I got you on my list and it's paid, somebody has paid $125 for me to come by there and check it. Well, you should be happy you paid $125. This is the less job you have to do then because you're not coming to check my prostate. Sir, I'm going to check it. Now, I'm going to be by there tomorrow, and I'm, at 7.15, I'm putting my rubber glove on with a little bit of gel on it, and I am going to check your prostate, and then I'll let you get on to work. Well, I tell you what, that rubber glove ain't going nowhere near me, homeboy. I tell you what, you bring your on over to my eyes if you want to. It ain't going to be pretty, and it ain't going to be nice with you and your rubber glove. Sir, Somebody sir. might have to stick a rubber glove up your when I'm done with you. Don't be coming about my eyes talking about checking my prostate. Sir, sir, do you realize that this is the leading cause of black men? Do you realize man, that? I understand that, man. All right, they you got ain't coming to my house and check my out of prostate. Three five black man. men, three out of five black men are lost every year man, because of prostate this, cancer. So you ought to be very grateful that someone is sending me by there to check it and make sure you're okay. I'm grateful that I can pay for a doctor that I go to every, every uh, once a year, man. You don't have to come to my house talking about sticking no rubber glove up me, man. What's wrong with you? Sir, sir, I'm not going to sit here and go back and forth with you. My job is to give you a friendly call and let you know that I'm coming. All right? Yeah, I, now, tomorrow yeah. morning, listen, I don't want to hear anymore. Tomorrow morning, I'm there at 715, and you're going to get your prostate checked whether you like it or not. Well, you bring your on by here, then. I sure will be here. You bring your bad Thank you bad enough to come over here and check my prostate. You bring your on. I'm going to come check on. it. So you just be ready at 715 that you're going to get your prostate checked. Yeah, I'll be here. I sure I'll be let here. you go on the work. Case closed. You come on over here if you want to. You know I'm going to check my prostate. Yeah, I'll be here. I sure will be here. Yeah, I'll be here. 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 I'll be I don't care if I got to come over there, sir, and hold you down and check your prostate. I'm coming to check your prostate at 7.15 tomorrow morning. Well, I tell you what, you bring your bad on over here, you, you think you know who I am, what I need over here? You come on over here and you do what you got to do. I I'm going to be over there tomorrow you morning. you going to be you're going to be checking something else besides me. You're going to be checking your own You bring your bad on over here if you want to and see if I don't get you up out of here. I'll be coming to my house with that bad Baby, you you found somebody talking about I need a prostate check or something? Somebody on the phone talking about I need a prostate or something. You bring your, I'll tell you what, I'll be here when you get here. You bring your over here. I will be there tomorrow at 7.15 in the morning with my glove on. You might walk your over here. You might be wheeled away from this. You bring your if you want to. I'm going to have my glove on tomorrow, and I'm going to be checking your prostate at 7.15 in the morning. You bring your if you want to tell my checking the prostate. You're going to be checking your own prostate, because I'm telling you what, I got something for your when you come over here. You bring your bad you think you're bad enough to come over here and check something over here, you come on with it. I got one come more on thing I need to say to you. Are you listening? Then what the hell you got to say to me now? You ain't told me it's not. Then what the you got to tell me now? Are you listening to me? Just bring your on over here. You're going to be here. I'm going to be over there, but I got one more thing I want to say. Are you then, listening? What you got to say to me, man? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy, who? <laughs> Who are you? Who you say you was again? <laughs> hey, man, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Your homeboy got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Chris Johnson with Steve Harvey, man. <laughs> hey, Tommy, boy. Man. <laughs> you all right, Roger? Boy, y'all about to make me go out. I wonder who the hell gonna come out uh, of somebody's house to do a prostate check, man, on a regular basis like that, man. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, y'all sure got me, man. I, I'm going to get him back, boy. I, I can't believe he do me like that. I'm going to go over there and check his prize state. You know, I don't even think he get here checked on the regular. I want to have somebody come check mine. <laughs> hey, man, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask the CLO. The Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, is in the building. Are you ready, sir? Yes. Let's go. Here we go. Amari in Tulsa says, I'm a 40-year-old professional man, and I have two Great Danes that are my babies. I recently started dating a new woman, and she's intimidated by my dogs because of their size. When she first visited me, I put the dogs in the garage, but it's too cold for that now. I suggested to her I let the dogs roam free in the house, and we can stay in my bedroom. She didn't like that idea, and she said, we're not compatible. My dogs are sweethearts. So I don't know what the problem is. Should I compromise with her? Well, I mean, what's your compromise, dog? You finna lose your woman over them damn dogs. Now, if that's what you prefer <laughs> over this woman, then keep your damn dogs. Uh -huh. I mean, you got two big ass great dames walking around. She's scared of them. You know, sisters are scared of dogs like that. Should I compromise with her? What's the compromise, partner? It ain't mm -hmm. that cold in the garage. Put a heat in the garage. You're going to lose this chick over these damn dogs. I don't understand. If all you pet lovers is finna get mad at this statement right here, I don't give a damn. You know I don't give are. a damn. I'm not losing the chick of my dreams over no damn dog of my dreams. I ain't never dreamed of no dog. He said my <laughs> dogs are sweethearts, Steve, and he doesn't yeah, see sweetheart. what the problem is. I, that's all that problem to you. Mm -hmm. See, everybody ain't got to like your dog. Everybody mm -hmm. ain't dog people. Everybody ain't cat people. Everybody ain't fish people. You know, that's and, and that's just it. You know, my wife loves our dog, Bear. But she know I got rules. You know, Bear can't stay in here. Sleep <laughs> in the bedroom for what? <laughs> Man, he got in the bedroom one morning. My arm was laying off the bed. Uh -huh. And he came over and was licking it. And, and I didn't know what it was. When I woke up and it was dark, <laughs> like I backhanded his ass so hard. <laughs> oh, no, Steve. No, I back him and peed on myself. No, 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 no. Now, what's got to happen now? Oh, that's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, bear got to go. <laughs> yeah. Get up in the middle of the night. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm naked. Oh, of course. He see me. Oh. It's pitch black. I can't see him. Uh -huh. Next thing I know, his cold ass, his cold nose on my ass. <laughs> How that feel? <laughs> bear got to go. I done damn near towed the doorway out. <laughs> That's a good thing, man. Bear got to go. No. <laughs> So I damn near told the doorway. You don't even understand. Because you don't need the light when you wake up. I get it. Because you know where everything Dog, is. Dog, I know uh -huh. my house. Uh huh. Uh -huh. This cold ass nose didn't touch my ass. It's like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> so no. So crazy. No, nah, man. Your girl don't care about them great days. That's you, dog. So do, handle your business. You're going to lose a girl over the dog. Get a heater for the garage. All right, Amari, you heard the CLO. Uh, moving on, Chevette in Birmingham says, I'm 59 years old and I'm engaged to be married for the fourth time. I want everything to go right this time, so I need to know how I should handle a big secret. I have a problem with my feet, and I've hidden it from my fiancé for the entire eight months we've been together. <laughs> my feet sweat constantly, and they smell bad. I constantly washed my feet and used powder when he was around. We will be living together soon, so my doctor said to be honest with him. Do you think it will be a deal breaker for him? Well, here come number five. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> I ain't got nothing for you, Chevette. Oh. No, nah, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. You can you fix. Know, you come on, keep, you can fix punky feet, dog. Fix dog, you got to keep washing them and keep powder on them. Now, who wants to look down them white ass feet all the time? <laughs> I've been kicking Not she ass, she feet. <laughs> you know, looking like you've been kicking sacks of fly all day long. We go, we go out one night in the summer. When we come home. I look down, your feet soppy wet, <laughs> and wow. they stink. Mm. Girl. A nutritionist, maybe? No, nah, you got to get some injections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, she's got yeah, I, tell, I have a suggestion. What? what? Go to Home Depot and get some mm -hmm. Thompson's water sealer. 
and mm-hmm. dip your feet down in that sealer. If it can seal the deck, it can seal your feet. Oh, no. That's all I got for you. Uh, okay. Well, she's going to be Sorry. shining like a some polished oak. What is it going to look like? What you want? You want, you want shine or you want stink? What you want? <laughs> shine. I'll take shine, Alex. Oh, yeah. So yes, when you pour thanks. water on it, just bead up on it because it's Bead sealed. up. Everything. You don't even sweat no more. <laughs> Water just roll right off. Actually, so what's the name of it, Thompson? Thompson's Water Seal. It's for decks and porches. Okay. All right. You it's heard clear. It now. Oh, you they get already it color. got that. Now, Girl, don't go no. do that. Yeah. That's no. a joke. Right. Oh, yes, of Thank course. You. Yes, please don't go do that for real. Yeah. I said Home Depot. I thought that would clear it up, but, yeah. you know, just for protection mm. purposes. Marshawn in Houston says, I'm 28 years old and married to a great guy that is starting his own business. His business partner is my friend from my hometown, and he has a successful business already. He might be into some kind of fatal attraction because we had sex a few times before I got married for old time's sake. And about three months ago, he met my husband had propositioned him about a new business idea. I may be overthinking this, but it's odd to me. What do you think? Does he have an ulterior motive? He propositioned your husband about a new business idea. Well, well, if if the proposition got something to do with you, you may not have to worry about this uh, old secret no more, because he's going to get his ass whooped. (laughs) Because <laughs> once a man make you his wife, he 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 come with a different attitude. Yeah, man. might want to tell him. Fatal attraction. <laughs> might want to tell him. Is you nuts? <laughs> tell him for what? The business might Fatal be a legitimate attraction. business. You overthinking it. So don't tell him y'all had a relationship in the hell past. No. Why no. would you do that? No hell no. no. Bring that up. What? Everything crazy. Totally. Uh, no. All right, Jay. It, it ain't the time for honesty. <laughs> oh, I never is I with you. I'm to you. you, yeah. Where do y'all you keep just, getting these you, honest moments? There's never a time for it. There's never it's a time damn. for it. Damn. You're right. This ain't no time to come never. clean. By what? Mm-hmm. But, and that old right. saying that every what's ever in the dark come to light, that ain't true. Stay in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, thank you, Ciela. We're out of time. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. We know there are a ton of podcasts out there. Well, we have one we would love for you to check out. It is called the Pen Pals Podcast with Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. We are both stand-up comedians. We're actors. We're writers. But now, most of all, we are your pen pals. Every single episode, we get two letters that we read from our listeners listeners, our new pen pals. It can be about anything going on in their life, and sometimes we're also joined by guests like Will Ferrell. I'm going to bring you up in front of the group, and I'm going to punch you as hard as I can in the stomach. Rose Byrne. Welcome this is to West it. Hollywood. We keep it clean. Judd Apatow. If yeah. you use like Beats by Dre, is that mm-hmm. considered Andy Mandler? Conan O'Brien. I'm just showing you that my mind is quick, if not that funny. And Mandy Moore. We're all crossing the line together. Listen to the Pen Pals podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sincerely, your new pen pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. Are you hungry for the inside scoop on women's soccer? I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And we're professional soccer players, best friends, and the host of Snacks, the only women's soccer podcast hosted by active players that gets into the most recent news, gossip and fun of the nwsl the women's national team and the delightful delicious wacky world of snacks it's a weekly show about women's soccer our friendship the foods that we like the places we get our hair cut the random things that we come up with in our daily lives and we get to talk to a bunch of our friends all the time which is like one of my favorite parts about it that's also my favorite part too each week we have guests like Kelly O'Hara, Megan Rapino, Julie Foudy, all giving you an inside look at the NWSL, the road to the World Cup, and women's sports culture. So what are you waiting for? Listen to Snacks on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Jay, this is about stuff you say to your neighbors under your breath. Please explain. This has to do with we see our neighbors all the time. We're not that fond of them Mm -hmm. sometimes. So we speak, but under our breath, we're saying little things, little little insulting things like, Hey, how you doing? 
You need to clean up that last dance, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Keep it 100, Jack. <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it 100. You got one seat. Jack, Jack. I just want Earl, how you doing? How you doing? Earl, my man. You need some curtains, man. You're trying you to go see your that. naked ass oh. every night. <laughs> we see it too much. How you doing, Franklins? Good to see you. Hope that boy stay home this time. Oh. 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 Here we go. Yeah. He takes vacations, Junior. Hey, good to see ya. Uh-huh. This is the fifth time. Hey. Come on, nephew. The stuff we Perkins. say to our neighbors. Perkins, how are you? Good, good. Did you do something with that damn boat you've been having? Back? <laughs> that, damn boat. that boat don't even work. You got D restrictions, huh? <laughs> how you doing, Miss Kennedy? Hey, how you doing? I smell that weed way over here. <laughs> Across the street, I smell it. <laughs> Dale, Dale, Kim, how you guys doing today? With them stupid ass kids. <laughs> Yeah. Them half with me. Not the kids. Yeah, with Not them the babies. Stupid ass kids. <laughs> the stuff we say to our neighbors under, under our, our breath. breath. It's gotta be seen. It's gotta breath. be seen. <laughs> Come on, Junior. Hey, hey, Smith's good to see you. <laughs> All right, man. I wouldn't be pushing my mama that long. <laughs> <laughs> now she got to do something. Three people. In a wheelchair. <laughs> hey Bob, how are you? Good, good. At least you can stop your fat ass wife from swimming naked on her. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just scan the hell out of my dog. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Anderson. How you doing? Yeah. How you got four claws on the block and don't none of them work? <laughs> four cars? <laughs> that yard is a mess. <laughs> stuff, stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Come on, Steve. Will us. What's going on, boy? I see you. Have a good one today. So glad he over there because that breath for him. <laughs> He, with that he cut my grass last week. He killed my flowers. He spoke to me and cut my grass last week. With this wow. That's bad. That's a dragon right there. <laughs> hey, hey, Johnsons. It's good to see y'all. All right, now, man. No, no, we good. We good. I'll tell you right now. I know a baby when he eat paper. I know. I know that baby eat paper. And he can't tell me no more. I know that baby eats paper. Baby ain't smart at all. Now you ain't got to bring him over. No, we good. Stuff oh, we he say got to make this birthday party. Baby. Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Tommy, go. Leonard. Hey. Nice day today. Good, good. Wasn't good last night, damn police. What? I know you selling dope. I know you selling dope. You, you called him. You called him. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Ethel, Herman, how y'all doing? So good. Ethel and Herman. Ethel my friend, and Herman. My friend. <laughs> Time for y'all put y'all mama in a hole. <laughs> Black people don't do that. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mitchell, what's going on? Yeah, I'm good. You don't see that dog through in your yard? You just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just don't right leave, it. leave it there. <laughs> Step in the neck. Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Junior. Hey, what's up, Curtis? Hey, Keisha, what's going on? Curtis. <laughs> All right, now. Ain't no end of the world no better than that damn loud. <laughs> he ain't killing that. <laughs> Way too much noise. Been I don't even know how they touched both their stomachs. <laughs> All right, man, I'm good, man.
<laughs> Come on, nephew. Stuff we say to our neighbors He's under our breath. Conley. Conley. Yard's looking good. Looking real good. You come over this line, though. You come over this line. One more time with that damn line. I'm telling you now. You know what the damn line is. I know you know what the damn line You know my side. You know your damn side. Keep on doing it. Line, well, that property line means something. <laughs> yeah, that uh -huh. really do, man. It's invisible, <laughs> but it means something. You know what that line is, uh -huh. right? Man, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff we say to our neighbors under our breath. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I'm good. Woo, she whooped your ass last night. Hey, she <laughs> got into a fight. <laughs> she, she told us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Close it out. Stuff we say to our Take neighbors. Home, dog. Read out, <laughs> Sydney. Hey. Yeah. Could have invited me over to the little stank ass party. No, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They had a barbecue and everything. I had a barbecue and everything. I know. I know you ran out of room over there. But... <laughs> Patio you built. <laughs> Game over. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Thank you. That was good. Coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time, guys. Would you rather take five toddlers to the beach or would you rather take them to Six Flags? No, I'd rather take the beach. them to the beach. Beach. The beach. The beach. Yeah. Yeah. Them rides. Take them to the beach. No, not no. the rides. So. Them people. No. All them games and different food booths. No. Uh -huh. Bathroom. No. We <laughs> all go in the bathroom at the same time. Let's walk out in the water. <laughs> Okay, hold hands. Ready, go ahead. Now, let's babies. walk on back. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we're going to take them five toddlers to the beach. Yeah, I can yeah, walk. Put the back. floaties on the collar. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on. We ain't finna go to this park, though. Uh, you got right. to hold it's hands, terrible. watch people. Uh-uh. Uh, would, you, would you rather wear a linen suit without underwear, or would you rather wear dress suits, dress shoes with tube socks? Dress shoes. Linen suit, no underwear, dress shoes, tube right, socks. Give me, yeah, give me the linen suit. Linen and no drawers. I'm going to try that. Commando. No. <laughs> Man, it don't be itching, though. I'm going to have to go on and put these damn tube socks on. <laughs> yeah, I'm what? I'll tell you right why. Why? Why, why is that on? Linen. Uh-huh. Linen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It gets wrinkled fast, too. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't thick enough, though. Ain't enough support. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, right. ah, hell. <laughs> All right. Would you rather your face turns red, fire red, when you're aroused, or would you rather uh, your eyes blink real fast when you're aroused? Oh, mine blink fast anyway. Mine blink <laughs> immediately when I'm aroused. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm trying to give you a signal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Junior? Yeah, I'm gonna go with blink real fast. I, I, I don't want to be red. I can't. It's hard to get red in my color. I can't. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, Steve. I just go on and take the red face. I'm not gonna be sitting up in. And here everyone will know. No, uh -huh. You gonna think I got Tourette? I'm telling you, I'm gonna yeah. be blinking my ass. All right. <laughs> All right, would you rather make love for hours, make love for hours once a week, or a quickie twice a week? Oh, yeah. Make love for hours just once a week or have a quickie two times a week. Yeah. yeah How that. many? That still ain't enough. Yeah. Oh, I do that one hour once a Come week. Come on, you're not a robot. Yeah. <laughs> I do that one hour once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Put some that's time it? in, some pressure. Yeah, you can do moves. You can try things. You know, you, you, know, you can. <laughs> Take a drink, you know what I mean? Get some water. Yeah. How long is this going to oh, be? For hours. hours. For hours, you know, once, for a week, once a week. Them two quickies. No, hell yeah. no. Mm -mm. All right, we got to go. That's uh, today's round of Would You Rather. Dothan, Alabama, and everybody around the way, it's your boy, Nephew Tommy Jew. July 15th, the nephew is coming to town. Did you hear what I said, Dothan, Alabama? I said July 15th, the nephew is coming to town. I'm back. I'm stronger. I'm better. I got a testimony. Oh, I got a purpose, and I'm still straight stupid. Come on and get your laugh on, baby. It's going down. July 15th, mm-hmm, Dothan, Alabama. Tickets are on sale right now. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
It is time now to check Steve's voicemail. And if you want to leave a message for Steve, call him 877-29-STEVE. All right, Steve, this first caller has a spiritual question for you. Good evening, Steve. Thank you so much for sharing your inspirational relationship with God, with the world. My question is simple. How does one stop longing for something that God has obviously said no to that particular request? Thank you. Bye-bye. That's that's everybody's mm-hmm. dilemma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. We want what we want. Yeah. That's yeah. everybody's dilemma. Mm-hmm. And then also sometimes what you want just is in the form of temptation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not always longing for something you ask God for and he told you no. Sometimes God makes moves he know you wouldn't make. Because he heard conversations you didn't hear. Mm. And he made decisions that you just not going to make for the betterment of yourself. Mm-hmm. Example, mm-hmm. I want this relationship to work with this person. Mm-hmm. God, know that ain't the one you need. So sometimes right. he don't aid you in doing that. Now, you can run off and do it yourself. But you're going to get beat up. He not coming yeah. back. You quit asking God for him to come back. He not coming back. That ain't got nothing to do with God. The dude you want and made a decision that he don't want you. Mm -hmm. Now, what you keep asking God for him for? (laughs) Instead, you should ask God for somebody that wants you. So sometimes, and I had to learn this myself, (laughs) the thing that I'm asking God for that I keep getting a no to is for a reason. Yeah. And it's usually been because God has something better for me. Better all the time. But you got to open up yourself to the better and stop thinking you got the answer. You can't ask God to bless you and then tell him how to do it. How to do it. That's just that. Amen, brother. Uh Uh-huh. All right. You better preach up in here. You Mm -hmm. better minister. (laughs) All right. (laughs) This caller. All right. Last week, we had a CLO question, Steve. It was about the, uh, it was from the married woman who had emailed us, she asked us if she was wrong because she purchased Raider season football tickets but changed them from her husband's name to her name after he told her he preferred attending the games with his boys instead of going with her. So this caller has a comment about that. Hey, Steve. Uh, I'm listening to your radio show this morning, and I agree with you. My husband is one of three brothers. The brothers need to be together sometimes, just the men. I'm okay with him hanging with his brothers. He don't need me around him all the time. We together 24 seven, seven days a week. Let that man have some men time. If you don't, you gonna drive him crazy and you gonna wanna know why he ain't home or he coming home and go straight to sleep. These women need to let it loose. When you wanna hang with your girls, you hang with your girls. He don't have to come. I love it when my husband hang with his brothers. Let them men have their men time. Y'all have a good day. I love her. She said that, didn't she? She said that. Because, (laughs) listen, everybody needs me time. Yeah. Yes. Hey, when I tell my wife I'm going on a golf trip, she don't be talking about, no, can I go? No. She no, I don't want her to go. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to go play golf, talk trash, get through, Mm -hmm. go eat without showering. (laughs) Then I want to take a shower. I don't want all these speeches you got. You've been playing golf. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry now. And now here she comes. She done Um, walked in the room. I do want to go. Well, you ain't. (laughs) You ain't. And get out of this studio, Marjorie. You're not going to play golf. Hey, Marjorie. Quit talking to her. You are not going to play golf. No. You don't want to go. You're not going. Uh-uh. I want to talk. I don't want to shower when you ask me to shower. Hey, Marjorie. No. Stop. I want to eat now. Why don't you take a shower first? You'll enjoy your food better. Who need a shower to enjoy their food better? Crazy man, you're crazy. Man, can we go to break? Yeah, yeah, it's about that time. (laughs) We love our right, all right. Coming up next, it is the nephew Uh. with today's prank phone call. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, my sugar daddy set me up. 
But mm. right now, the nephew here with the prank <laughs> phone call. What you got, Neff? House party at Glenda's. Oh. Whoa. House party <laughs> at Glenda's. Everybody like a good house party? House yeah. party. Good Glenda. At Glenda's. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Hello. Hello. Uh, hey, man, y'all need me to bring some ice over there? Yeah, man, we can we can use some ice over here. Who, who is this? Hey, this is Lawrence, man. I was trying to see uh, if y'all need some ice. What kind of beer should I bring, man? Y'all want some beer? Man, everybody over here pretty much do Budweiser, man. Now, who, who'd you say this was again? This is Lawrence. This is Lawrence, man. I ran into your wife at the um, the supermarket, and she was telling me y'all was, you know, getting together, and she told me to, you know, come on through if I had some time. So I ain't want to just come through there without nothing. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, come through empty-handed looking disrespectful, man. Yeah, yeah, I feel it, man. We just, we pretty much over here just kicking and watching the game, man. You can, you know, some beer, some ice. That'll, that'll be good, bro. Okay, 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 cool, man. Well, listen, um... I mean, how many people y'all gonna have? I want to make sure I bring enough stuff. Yeah, but who, who do you, I can, I can really, man, who'd you say this was again, though? My name is Lawrence, man. My name is Lawrence. I went to, uh, I went to school with Glenda. Oh, okay. You went to, you went to school with Glenda. Okay. Lawrence, huh? Yeah, yeah. We went, we went to school together. So, you know, we, we, I ain't seen her like, man, I swear it's been like 15, 20 years. You know what I mean? Ironically, you know, I just got back to town, you know, two weeks ago and, and to, you know, run into a classmate. I was like, wow. But, but you know, I, uh, she invited me out, man. I ain't been nowhere since I got here. So, you know, it's, it's cool just to get out a little bit. So, you know, you say Budweiser and I bring some ice, man. So, yeah, we good. We good. So I'm just going to bring a couple cases. That's cool? Yeah, man, that's that's cool. But you, you say, Glenda, which y'all, did y'all, y'all went to high school or college? Or what, and where'd you, where'd you meet her at? No, no, no. Me, me and Glenda went to high school together, dog. Oh, y'all went to high school together? Yeah, that's back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You say, what'd you say? You said your name, Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence, Lawrence. Yeah, we went to high school together, man. That was, uh, you know, that, man, Glenda still look good, dog. That, how long y'all been married? Man, we've been married for about 16 years, man. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, yeah, 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 man, you did good, man. I I, I, I hate I messed it up, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's neither here nor there, man. But it's just ironic that I ran into her, man, so I just appreciated the invite. I saw I saw Glenda, man. Yo, 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 your girl looking good, man. I ain't seen her in a long time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yo, man. What do you, let's back up a minute, man. What, what you mean? You you hate you messed that up. What you mean by that? Well, no, that no. Okay, okay. My bad, dog. I'm, I'm thinking you familiar with my name. No, um. See, Glenda was um. Glenda was my high school sweetheart. You know, we dated from from ninth grade to the twelfth grade, man. We went to prom together. All right, right. Look, all right, man. I see. Um. You know what, man? I, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, let me see. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Glenda, what she meant by by telling you she you could come through the crib, bro. But you you can't come through my house, dog. I mean, I didn't I didn't have mine back in the day, and and, and she might have had hers, bro. But you you can't come over my house, dude. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. Nah, Glenda then invited me, and I'm coming. I don't, I don't know what what the hostility is, but man, but I'm I'm coming to the house. <laughs> you ain't you ain't coming to my house, dog. Hey, dog, yeah. listen to me, man. I'm not finna sit in and go back and forth with you. I done ran into Glenda in the store. Glenda said she, you know, it was good to see me, you know, come through tonight. I said, cool, you know, and she gave me the number on uh, asking you what else I should, you know, what else I should get, you know. So I'm I'm calling you saying, hey, man, you want some ice and some beer? I'm going to roll through, man. It's just a party, dog. You insecure? What's, what's up? No, I ain't no insecure. Listen, listen to me, dog. I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and get Glenda. All right, and, and this, because this right here don't make sense to me, dog. What you mean Glenn invited you to the house? And I'm telling you right now, you ain't coming to my house, bro. If you come to my house, you're going to get up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So what you, what you threatening me now, dog? That's what you're doing? You who, who is you, dog? I'm her first. That's who I am. Dog. I would never do that. I'm her first. I'm her first. I'm the one she really remember. What you mean you don't want she really remembers? I'm her first, dog. See, man, I, I, look, man, I, I, like I said, you bring your punk over to my house, and it's going to be about 20 waiting on you. All right, all my boys over here, we kicking it. All right, you bring your over here, you going to leave. I promise you that. I tell you what, man, I'll be over there because Glenda the one invited me, and I'm showing up. And if you start tripping with me, guess what, dog? It's on and popping. One thing I ain't forgot is my first love, and my first love that invited me to the house. Man, I can't, I can't even deal with this right here, bro. I'm going to tell you, you know, you, you obviously, you don't spoke to Glenda. You know where the I live, all right? You show your up. 
I want you to come on. I want you to come on over and you show up. Like I said, you show up and your ain't going home. I promise you that, bro. Right, well, it's, it's whatever then, man. It's whatever, bro. This, hey, bro, look, look, man. Me and my boys over here, we just waiting on it. We just waiting on it. All you got to do is, is make the move, bro. All you got to okay. do is make well, the well, move. It's, it's, I'll tell you what, man. I'm just, I'm, let me call Glenda. See, I need to call Glenda. Because, see, 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 Glenda. Yeah, let me get Glenda. Who the are you, dog? Who the are you? I'm going to tell you one more time. I am Glenda's first. I don't give a And, and it sounds like I might be her last, her everything. This must be out his mind, CeeLo. Listen, I got this p on the phone, bro. Rick, yo. Yo, dog. Hey, let me ask you this here, man. You don't even know where Glenda's spot at, do you? Do you? What the f I know where her spot at. What the f who the f are you, dog? What the f think this is, bro? Hey, man, man I you bring your f over here. I want you to show up at my sh You call me with this stupid sh bro. You talking about my girl? My girl's spot. You come, but I want to see you at the crib right now, bro. Get your f in your whip right now. You drive down to my sh and I'm going to you up, bro. You ain't finna do nothing to me. What? I said you ain't gonna do nothing, do nothing to, me. to you, huh? I ain't gonna do nothing to you. I promise you bring over here, bro. I'm telling you, you're not going home, dog. You're not going home. Whatever. I got one more thing I want to say to you. Is you That's listening? Talking my girl? What the? I, I got one more thing I want to say to you, though. Is you listening to me? I'm not listening to you. I, hey, man, is you listening? Is you listening? Because evidently you ain't. Are you listening to me? You want to say this? Is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? You just got pranked by your wife Glenda. Damn. <laughs> you see, <he's> <laughs> you're not playing, man. You're not playing, dog. I'll kill y'all, man. I'm glad, I'm so glad this is a joke, bro. I'm telling you, because one of us was leaving here tonight, bro. <laughs> 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 oh God! Ah. Daddy, hey, uh, before I go into my normal routine, hey, uh, J. Anthony Brown. Yeah, what you need? Hey, uh, uh, from my understanding, you know, the other day when I was doing my golf training, uh, uh, uh oh, <laughs> they telling me, uh, uh -oh. they telling Team me, Tom? Jay, you, 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 Mr. Team Tommy, President mm -hmm. Team Tommy, CEO. They yeah. telling me, you, yeah, you CEO of Team Tommy, you yeah. doing me now? From what no, I understand, no, no. can, can I Tommy just, can't can I, hear? Why Tommy can't hear? Why? You, huh? Huh? What? Did you hear me? Did, can what, I just, what did? In, what? In my what defense, did you do, Jay? Yeah. In my defense, mm -hmm. if y'all gonna sit mm -hmm. here and talk about forgiving the lady, you know, <laughs> if y'all can, for, then <laughs> I'm asking you. Come on, what Jay. I'm asking you, Come on, Jay. What, I, no, what I'm asking on. you to do <laughs> is. This is we had we had a long segment about forgiveness, and what I'm. What I'm asking you to do <laughs> is to forgive. If anything you heard that was offensive, I need you to search deep down in your heart. I need you to hug me. I need you to hug and, me and, like and that boy me. did. <laughs> and forgive me. <laughs> Well, I want you to know this. Deep down in your heart, and you forgive. forgive. Yeah. I'm not. What I'm not going to do is hug your ass. You do know that. <laughs> <laughs> Dothan, Alabama, and everybody around the way. July 15th, the nephew is coming to town. Did you hear what I said, Dothan, Alabama? I said July 15th, the nephew is coming to town. I'm back. I'm stronger. I'm better. I got a testimony. Oh, I got a purpose, and I'm still straight stupid. Come on and get your laugh on, baby. It's going down. July 15th, mm -hmm. Dothan, Alabama. Tickets are on sale right now. All right, we got to move on, guys. <laughs> thank you, nephew. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Jay. <laughs> uh, listen, coming up, it's the Strawberry Letter subject. My sugar daddy set me up. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. We know there are a ton of podcasts out there. Well, we have one we would love for you to check out. It is called the Pen Pals Podcast with Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. We are both stand-up comedians. We're actors. We're writers. But now, most of all, we are your pen pals. Every single episode, we get two letters that we read from our listeners, our new pen pals. It can be about anything going on in their life. And sometimes we're also joined by guests like Will Ferrell. I'm going to bring you up in front of the group, and I'm going to punch you as hard as I can in the stomach. Rose Byrne. Welcome this is to West it. Hollywood. We keep it clean. Judd Apatow. If you yeah. use like Beats by Dre, is that mm -hmm. considered Andy Mandler? Conan O'Brien. I'm just showing you that my mind is quick. If 
not that funny. And Mandy Moore. We're all crossing the line together. Listen to the Pen Pals podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sincerely, your new Pen Pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. Are you hungry for the inside scoop on women's soccer? I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And we're professional soccer players, best friends, and the host of Snacks, the only women's soccer podcast hosted by active players that gets into the most recent news, gossip, and fun of the NWSL, the women's national team, and the delightful, delicious, wacky world of Snacks. It's a weekly show about women's soccer, our friendship, the foods that we like, the places we get our hair cut, the random things that we come up with in our daily lives. And we get to talk to a bunch of our friends all the time, which is like one of my favorite parts about it. That's also my favorite part too. Each week we have guests like Kelly O'Hara, Megan Rapino, Julie Foudy, all giving you an inside look at the NWSL, the road to the World Cup, and women's sports culture. So what are you waiting for? Listen to Snacks on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on sex, on dating, on work, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, (laughs) right now. That's for you, Jay. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Strawberry Letter with my good friend, Shirley Strawberry. Thank you, my good friend, Junior. Subject, my sugar daddy set me up. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 34-year-old woman grieving for the loss of my 77-year-old best friend and sugar daddy that had been in my life since I was 19. He was also my father's closest friend, so we kept our relationship a secret for obvious reasons. When it all started, he was married to a woman that I looked up to. She was beautiful and classy, and he turned me into her with all of the nice gifts and trips he sponsored for me. We didn't have sex until I was 23 years old, and he never pressured me for sex. He rented me an apartment, and he'd come stay with me for hours just to avoid the arguments with his wife. We were happy for about six Seven years until he got a divorce and uh, he wanted to see me more because he was bored and lonely. If I was busy and couldn't make time for him, he would get an attitude and threaten to cut me off. Instead of letting me go, he bought me a three bedroom house and he helped me get a luxury vehicle. By then, he didn't care as much as uh, about us getting caught because he was divorced and lived alone. I was still afraid of my father finding out, so I was still living a stressful double life well my sugar daddy died two months ago and that's when all of our secrets were revealed i got a call from his ex-wife and she said that my sugar daddy left me a large sum of money the deed to my house and his two cars his ex-wife called me a whore and said she would be calling my father next Before I could take all of this in, my father called and said he heard the news. He told me to have a nice life with the money and gifts that I prostituted for. I was crushed. I've also been a daddy's girl, and he won't speak to me. Always. I'm sorry, I've always been a daddy's girl, and he won't speak to me. Will my father ever love me again? What should I do? Well, there's not really much you can do now. Um, It's been done. And your sugar daddy is dead. So, um, you know, to the question, will your father uh, ever love you again? I mean, he's not going to stop loving you. He's mad right now. He's disappointed in you terribly right now. So trying to talk to him and all that is just going to have to wait until later. Some time needs to pass and he needs time. uh, Your father does. Uh, I mean, this was his closest friend. And he found out in a crazy way from his friend's ex-wife. And I'm sure he was shocked. He found out that... 
his friend was sleeping with his young daughter. He doesn't know that, you know, you guys didn't sleep together till you were 23 or whatever. He knows that you've known him since 19, and your father's not going to be good with this. He's just not. Uh, you know, I'm sure it was embarrassing to hear it from his ex, from his best friend's ex-wife. I'm sure, all that was embarrassing for your dad. And of course, we know why his ex-wife is upset. I mean, she's hating on you because um, a you were seeing him while they were married, and the the biggest one of all, the sugar daddy, really did set you up. He set you up in a good way. I mean, you know, he probably left you way more than he left his ex-wife, even though they're exes, and she's mad about that. He left you some very generous parting gifts, so, you know, please be smart. Don't lose it all because you feel guilty for being with him and all of that, but, um, you know, it is what it is now, and you can't take that back. You need to concentrate on maybe trying to fix this with your father. I say, again, give it time. Stay out of his way until you can ask for his forgiveness, and you can talk to your dad. That's all I got for you. Steve? I don't know. I don't really know what to say. This is kind yeah. of crazy. We've been it's dealing with a man, 43-year-old age difference. Your daddy's best friend. He was married. You start seeing him. Been in your life since you was 19. Start sleeping with him when you was 23. I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. You know, it's really nothing. Mm -mm. You know. It's done. What? I mean, yeah, it's it's over. It's water over the dam. Now, I really don't know what to tell you, little, little girl. I mean, hell. So what? You did it. You knew it was wrong when you was doing it. Even when he was married, then when he got a divorce, he wanted more. You didn't want to give him more. He wanted more time and everything. He didn't care about hiding it no more. You know, he told you he was going to cut you off. And all of it, you know, I, I just, is it enough money? Is it enough money to give the daddy some? <laughs> I mean, is, I mean, is we got a way to fix this? You know, can we, you know, Get your daddy a new truck out of it or something, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, you can heal people if they find a way. You know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You know, is it, you know, okay. now the whole thing is the reason your daddy's so upset is because the call he got from uh, the ex-wife. Guess what your damn daughter did? Mm -hmm. Sleeping with uh, Cleafus while he was living in. Oh, got, Cleavis's car, Cleavis, oh, got Cleavis. Cleavis's car, Cleavis. <laughs> got Cleavis's car. Got the got got the deed to Cleavis's house. Woo! That left him, him uh, half of the money. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a wonder why me and Cleavis didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. All this cause of Keisha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what happens. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I really don't exactly. know. I, I don't know how I'm going to help you. I'm going to come back and we'll see, but mm -hmm. I'm really kind of stuck. Maybe I should yeah. come back with a list of things you could do to try to, like, buy his affection back. Or All right. Hang or, on, Steve. Uh, we'll I have know part what two to really your... fix it. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 <laughs> minutes after the hour. My sugar daddy set me up is the subject. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's uh, let's get back into the strawberry letter. We got to recap it. My sugar daddy set me up is the subject. Woo. Yeah, this uh, girl was sleeping with her father's best friend. Been in his life since he was 19. He recently died. He's 77 years old. She been in this man's life. He's 43 years older than her. And uh, she started sleeping with the man when she was 23. And uh, she, he had a beautiful wife that she looked up to, classy and everything, sent on trips and everything. And then his wife and him got divorced, and he turned this young girl into his wife. Set her up, sent her on trips, sponsored everything, got her apartment. That didn't work. Luxury vehicle, then bought her the house. All this here. Well, he died. I killed over. All this extra sex just wore him, took him out, just took a toll on him. Oh, you know, the wife, the, the little girl, the wife, the little girl. Little girl probably killed him, though. You know, that's the one that probably <laughs> killed him. So you need to be grieving for a couple of reasons because you probably killed his old ass. And then, uh, you know, and so now, you know, you just, you're dealing with the fact that 
he left, and when the wheel got red, the ex-wife was there and found out that he done left you the house, the car, some of the money, and, and set you up for real good. Oh, now she mad. So she go tell your daddy, I would have got more, but your little prostituting ass daughter that set up here and prostituted herself to my ex-husband, Cleafus, who was your friend. Steve and I bet all y'all knew it all along. Mm, she called her a whore. And he didn't. Ooh. So yeah. now your daddy mad at you and you want your daddy back because you've been a daddy's girl. So what I've come up with is that maybe you're going to have to buy, the, buy your way out this situation. My question was simply before we left, is there enough money to give your daddy some? <laughs> so let's try to think of stuff that old men need. Do he need some teeth? <laughs> Could that be it? A you know, grill? sometimes old people be holding off on teeth. You know, how your daddy's gum line looking? Is everything <laughs> all right? You know, did mm -hmm. look like he needs some Everclear or anything or placement or some dentures. You know, hey, all old men need a new transmission. Let's look into that. <laughs> you know, can you can you get his transmission down that Amoco? You know, get it down uh, there and see what kind of deals they got. Fix his, fix his transmission. Yeah. Okay. So you say you know, everybody do, got do, a price? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's, here's, a, here's a big one for old men. Is that some part of the body that he needs removed? Uh, what? You know, they always... <laughs> Like hip replacement or uh, something? Neither. You know, they, they put that off. You know, kind of get your gallbladder took out. Old people put oh, that off, you know. Oh, okay. Just find out is there a body part that he might need to move <laughs> or something. Surgery. You know, to see if you, you, you can get through to him that way. Surgery. You got to do something to, to get your daddy back in your good graces. You know, do he need a flat screen? <laughs> you know, yeah, here's another thing. Maybe he got different tires on his car. Do he want all new tires that match? Because a lot of old people don't have tires that's a complete set. Oh. You got radios on the front. You got tread on the back. You got a chain link on one of them. You got left. Hey, I, you know, maybe he need, maybe he needs something. Maybe he need a body part. Do he need a foot? Oh, it ain't what? about removing it. Just do he need one? <laughs> Do, you do your daddy a need a refrigerator in his room? You got to find something. Get creative. Oh, thing. No. yeah. Do he need a nurse's aid? Do he need somebody to come out okay, and push him? That. Yeah. Push him down to the stove. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. Me, old men like to get pushed down to the liquor stove because they get to see the liquor from their chair. It's a dip. You get because most. You know, a lot of that good stuff is eye level. The Hennessy and all that. E and J is down. You know, Canadian wins, all that stuff down on the bottom row, you know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You know. <laughs> you really thought about this. <laughs> sweaters, you know, maybe you can't have enough sweaters, you know. He, your daddy probably always wanted one of them coogees. Coogee sweaters? Coogee sweaters? Yeah, he probably always From wanted them. back in the day? Yo, you can find one of them. <laughs> and, and hook him up with a coochie. You know, it's just some stuff, you know, y'all always wanted. You know, you got to think about that. You know, do we, hey, that do he true. need a new, hey, hey, <laughs> get him an ivory checkerboard. That, I, that ain't nobody got that down there at the gas station. <laughs> he show up with an ivory and, and Jay, you know. Checkerboard. <laughs> hey, check the freezer. Fill it up with meat. You know, okay, men like that stuff. One, Old Steve. men like. That's a good Old, one. Old men like that said, girl and girl, buddy, good buddy, girl, and can't hear feel of their feet, all kind of meat. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just like that, you know. So get him a new window air conditioner. Summer coming. <laughs> <laughs> That'll really uh, girl, if you can put central air in there, whoo! <laughs> you winning. <laughs> you can get your daddy back. <laughs> central air, <laughs> please. Central air? <laughs> he got a really? Girl, and then, then this, this this winter, get them window seal. Mm. <laughs> Just take care of her things, daddy, huh? Mm. Lord, don't go in daddy. there and come up with a new water heater. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, after two people take a bath, that's it. All right, thank you, Steve. Post uh, your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. <laughs> 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time for Comedy Roulette. And uh, Jay, explain it to us, it's please. It's so simple. I mean, Comedy I mean, Roulette, this is where we take five subjects. We put the subjects on the wheel. We spun the wheel around and around and around. Where the wheel stops, we'll do the damn thing. What are right. the subjects? You ready? Right? Here we go. Number one. I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. I hope it don't stop there. Huh? Number, <laughs> number two. Well, that when is me? the baby going to sleep? <laughs> Man, that is me. <laughs> number three. How long is he going to stay in the sixth grade? <laughs> Once number, again. <laughs> number four. Uh, well, you're big and bad. Come on down here. Okay. Oh, I heard that one. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Number five, I didn't get fired. They just tripping at the job. I, like okay? that. I didn't get fired. They tripping yeah. at Okay, me. and here's a bonus, number uh-huh. six. Uh-huh. Uh, if you buy cheap stuff, it, it, it doesn't last. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Spin it, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bad, bring me that bag. That's the one you want. <laughs> no, I'd have heard that. Oh, 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 Jay, you did not want number one. Oh, what is it? I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. Oh, uh, oh yeah. You, oh, you, you oh, didn't yeah. want that one. No, I didn't want that one. <laughs> you know the problem is, it's you. You is the problem. <laughs> yeah. I can't concentrate because of you. You doing something to me. Yeah. Make me lose my concentration. And whatever it is, stop it. <laughs> you need to focus. Right. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, that one was personal. That was, uh, yeah. yeah. That was like, yes, That's I'm why sorry, I didn't want it to stop on it. Man. Okay. Well, look here. Uh, look here. Uh, I want to apologize. This has never happened before. But me and the microwave went off at the same time. I want to say I'm sorry. Ding, ding, ding. I did not know I was through. And ding, the food. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. ding. Listen, 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 listen. I apologize. This is the first time this has ever happened. I dreamed I was peeing. Okay. All right. That's why we both laying here wet. I'm just saying, this is the first time this has ever happened. And I apologize. Okay. I was peeing in my dream. Okay. Yeah, when you're 12. Yeah. Yeah. You can have pee in your bed. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your mama. <laughs> Damn. 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 <laughs> I, I didn't know. I had no idea. I'm supposed to know. I'm supposed yeah. to know. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, up next, more of this crazy, ignorant show. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. We know there are a ton of podcasts out there. Well, we have one we would love for you to check out. It is called the Pen Pals Podcast with Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. We are both stand-up comedians. We're actors. We're writers. But now, most of all, we are your pen pals. Every single episode, we get two letters that we read from our listeners, our new pen pals. It can be about anything going on in their life. And sometimes we're also joined by guests like Will Ferrell. I'm going to bring you up in front of the group, and I'm going to punch you as hard as I can in the stomach. Rose Byrne. Welcome this is to West it. Hollywood. We keep it clean. Judd Apatow. If you yeah. use like Beats by Dre, is that mm-hmm. considered Andy Manwood? Conan O'Brien. I'm just showing you that my mind is quick, <laughs> if not that funny. And Mandy Moore. We're all crossing the line together. Listen to the Pen Pals podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sincerely, your new Pen Pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. Are you hungry for the inside scoop on women's soccer? I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And we're professional soccer players, best friends, and the host of Snacks, the only women's soccer podcast hosted by active players that gets into the most recent news, gossip, and fun of the NWSL, the women's national team, and the delightful, delicious, wacky world of Snacks. It's a weekly show about women's soccer, our friendship, The foods that we like, the places we get our hair cut, the random things that we come up with in our daily lives. And we get to talk to a bunch of our friends all the time, which is like one of my favorite parts about it. That's also my favorite part too. Each week we have guests like Kelly O'Hara, Megan Rapinoe, Julie Foudy, all giving you an inside look at the NWSL 
the road to the World Cup, and women's sports culture. So what are you waiting for? Listen to Snacks on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You guys already know, but sometimes honesty isn't the best policy. Here's a situation or question that we found on Facebook, and this one is from Jerry. Jerry says, when my wife comes home from getting her hair done and colored, it doesn't look great. But I always tell her it does. Always. Okay? Any married man should know this. No matter what, tell her she looks beautiful. So when do you feel like honesty isn't the best policy? <laughs> All the time? <laughs> I'm not All the time. that way. Yeah. What? I've, I've been yeah. under how this look on me. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> lie, man. Just lie. Yeah, yeah. Junior, I've been on the oath and lie. Like <laughs> What'd you say? Because up? I've been on the oath <laughs> and lie. In the court? <laughs> yeah. I've had to. What? I was going to lose. Perjured yourself? Perjured. I was trying yes. to save myself. <laughs> From what? I already know if I tell the truth, what's going to happen. Uh-huh. <laughs> so why not try this lie? You put your yeah. hand on the Bible and still lie? That's not a real Bible, show. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that's in there trying to it's get real. me is not mm-hmm. religious people. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in that line, the prosecutor line. Oh, fair game. Everybody in that line. I ain't you even put my hand on no Bible and then hold me to that. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you lied, Shirley, in a relationship? Yeah. When last time you lied to you when last time you lied to your hood? Uh last it's been week. a while. That's been a while. It's been a- you know, I'm not, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't really lie, but. When the last time have. you lied your wife, Tommy? This morning, when she called. What? Yeah. Huh? Perfectly comfortable this with morning. that answer. Yeah, this morning. <laughs> now, that was an honest answer from you. Uh, uh, when, <laughs> when, what about you, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> last time you are. Well, she out of town right now, so. Mm-hmm. I'm so anticipating as soon as, well, I'm, I'm anticipating as soon as she called. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, but why so, do you guys lie when the truth will will be, be just fine? I don't get that part. No, no, don't, don't say that. No, it's not the no, truth will no, be just fine. No, the truth, the will, truth will be just be, fine. Yes. No. 90% of the time, the truth is not fine. Okay, what is no. she going to ask you that you have to lie about this All right, morning? I'll tell you what. i tell you what. Ask me something. Let's let's just practice. Let's go. All right, do, hi, honey. Do several of them. Hi, hey, hi, honey. Is it raining there? About to seem like. You know, what, you, well, honey, do something, something. What, why you asking about the rain? What? Because, yeah. yeah. see, now nah, I got to. Is it raining now? Because now what I got to send you yeah. in the mail. No. I ain't, Go ahead, Shirley. Ask me something else. Uh, what, do you, what are you doing today? What are you going to do today? Like after work. I know you have to work, but like after Working work. Working all day, baby. I ain't, I'm going to work all the way till it's time to go to bed. I ain't got no breaks. Yeah. No breaks? Because I was thinking about coming down and maybe we could have lunch together. No, we ain't having lunch today because we got, we got cases is bagged up for COVID. What did you wear to work today? Did Ellie... Um... Did Ellie pick something out for you to wear? No, no. I just put on something myself. Just got on a sweatsuit. That's all. Well, I saw you posted something, and it had Ellie's name under it. Yeah, it was a picture from last week. <laughs> but, you know, I don't post nothing no damn way, so that picture just from last week. Uh-huh. Well, um, have you been on Instagram uh, lately? Instagram? Social media, yeah. Have you been on Instagram lately? When did they um? When did they start that? <laughs> <laughs> See, right uh, Insta, there. What you say? What did you call? You don't have Insta? to lie. You know, just that that just gets. She just be going. Your black ass. If you don't right. buy Steve. What are you lying about Instagram for? I don't know. Just practice. What this guy's <laughs> going show? Oh. Yeah. All right. Listen. Instagram. When did they start? When that? did they start? That? We'll have more of the That's Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up in 20 minutes after, right after this. I work with a bunch of liars. Yeah. yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, guys. Uh, before we left for break, we were talking about lying. No, we wasn't. No, <laughs> when we wasn't. isn't it a good time to lie? But you guys lie regardless. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and I'll tell you why I lie regardless. Why? I, because I don't get that. if you tell a woman the truth, yeah. they're going to expect it all the time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Hunk. And Bye then, surely. Manage your expectations. See, yeah, and then what happens was, was when I do tell the truth, oh, and I'm then no she people. don't believe me, and I pick those moments where I will tell you the truth, uh-huh. but they're very few. And then when you, when you assume that's a lie, then I jump yeah. out and prove that it was the truth, and then I'm good for another year. See, yeah. damn, every time I tell you something, you think I'm lying. Then I tell you the truth. Now, look at this right here. Yeah. Damn, baby. Mm. Yeah. Oh, now, that allows me, me to lie love for it. another yeah. year. I love it. <laughs> yeah. You see that what works. I'm saying? You, you see that, it. Shirley? That's how that works. <laughs> I see it, but, you know, whatever with that, all those well, lies. Okay. Well, lying you, you keeps don't forget. us together. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ain't you still with your husband after all these years? Yes. Thank the Lord he been lying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so but you're so then you're saying all men lie. That's what you're uh-huh. saying. I'm saying yeah. what? You're, you're saying all, all men lie. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming up yeah. in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll we'll try to get the truth out of you when we play a round of Would You Rather right after this. All right. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time, guys. Would you rather take five toddlers to the beach or would you rather take them to Six Flags? No, I'd rather take the them to the beach. Beach. The beach. The beach. Yeah. 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 Them well, rides. Take nah. them to the beach. No, not nah. them rides. So. Them people. No. Nah. Nah. All them games and different food booths. No. Nah. Uh-huh. Bathroom. No. Nah. We <laughs> all go in the bathroom at the same time. Let's walk out in the water. <laughs> Okay, hold hands. Ready, go ahead. Now, now, let's walk on back. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, we're going to take them five toddlers to the beach. Yeah, I can watch Put the floaties on the collars. Come on. Come on. We ain't finna go to this park, though. All right. Hold hands, watch people. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Would you you rather wear a linen suit without underwear, or would you rather wear dress suits, dress shoes with two? Tube socks. Dress shoes. Linen suit, Ooh. no underwear, Tube dress socks. shoes, tube right. socks. Give me, yeah, give me the linen suit. Linen and no drawers. I'm going to try that. Commando. No. <laughs> Man, it don't be itching, I'm going to have to go and put these damn tube socks on. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, you're right. Why? 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 Linen. Uh-huh. Linen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It gets wrinkled <laughs> fast, too. <Yeah. laughs> it ain't thick enough, though. Ain't enough support. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, All right. Uh, uh, hell. <laughs> All right. Would you rather your face turns red, fire red, when you're aroused, or would you rather uh, your eyes blink real fast when you're aroused? Oh, mine blink fast anyway. Mine blink <laughs> immediately when I'm aroused. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm trying to give you a signal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Junior? Yeah, I'm gonna go with blink real fast. I, I, I don't want to be red. I can't. It's hard to get red in my color. I can't. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Steve. I just going to take the red face. I'm not gonna be sitting up. And everyone will know. No, uh-huh. You gonna think I got Tourette? Tell him I'm yeah. gonna be blinking my ass. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would you rather make love for hours, make love for hours once a week, or a quickie twice a week? Oh, yeah. Make love for hours just once a week, or have a quickie two times a week? Yeah, How that. many? That still ain't enough. Yeah, oh, I do that really? one hour once a Come week. Come on, you're not a robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do that one hour once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Put some What's time that? in, some pressure. Yeah, you can do moves. You can try things. You know, you. You know, you can take a drink, you know what I mean? Get some water. Yeah. How long is this going to 
Oh, uh, for an hour. hour. Helpful? For hours. You know, once for one, a week. Uh, once them a week. two quickies. No, hell yeah. no. Mm-hmm. All right. We got to go. That's uh, today's round of Would You Rather coming up next at 49 minutes after. It's our last break of the day, and we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. We know there are a ton of podcasts out there. Well, we have one we would love for you to check out. It is called the Pen Pals Podcast with Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. We are both stand-up comedians. We're actors. We're writers. But now, most of all, we are your pen pals. Every single episode, we get two letters that we read from our listeners, our new pen pals. It can be about anything going on in their life. And sometimes we're also joined by guests like Will Ferrell. I'm going to bring you up in front of the group and I'm going to punch you as hard as I can in the stomach. Rose Byrne. This is West Hollywood. We keep it clean. Judd Apatow. If you use like Beats by Dre, is that Mm -hmm. considered Andy Andy Mandler? Conan O'Brien. I'm just showing you that my mind is quick if not that funny. And Mandy Moore. We're all crossing the line together. Listen to the Pen Pals podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sincerely, your new Pen Pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Scovel. All right, Steve, here we are. It is the last break of the day. It's the last break of the day. Love it. And I know you want to leave us with some closing remarks, Steve. You know, um, last night when I finished up Family Feud, I was talking to the audience. And um, we were talking about um, hanging in there. And uh, one of the audience members was saying that they feel underqualified because they work around and live around a lot of people with education and education is important to a lot of people and in a lot of fields and uh, please know education is really really great to have I'm not knocking it in any shape form or fashion so please don't misunderstand me but I was asking this person were they good at school and they said no never have been and they ask them just what they want to be in in life do you have to go to school they said not really and so that kind of troubled me a little bit because i was ended up talking to a person who was trying to shape who they really wanted to be and who they saw themselves becoming but were trying to shape it in the image of other external people on the outside and around him and i I began to talk to this guy and i I tried to um enlighten him to some things you know education is important and you should get as much as you can but you can become successful without an education now understand something if you want to be a doctor dentist lawyer you know you want to work in certain branches and fields of course you you can't be a teacher without an education can't be a professor without one can't be a lawyer doctor dentist scientist you there are things that require an education but if your imagination has you somewhere else stop letting other people try to put you in the box that they came out of there are some people that no matter how you talk to them if you don't do it they way then you ain't doing it the right way I cannot even begin to tell you how many people have tried to talk me off of the path I was on when clearly God had put me on another path. I tried to go to college. I did. I've never been a great student. Once again, understand me now, I'm not knocking education because I tell people all the time, I admire people who climb the corporate ladder through education, who climb the educational field. That is like amazing to me because that's not a skill set I have. But I can't tell you how many people have tried to talk me off my path. Do you know one time a lady once told me at a major institution that if you want to rep this institution, you're going to have to go back to college. And I said, go back to college for what? And they said, because it would make a better statement if you were a college graduate yourself. And I wasn't being arrogant or anything, but I was looking at this lady trying to figure out what better statement could I make than crawling out of homelessness, putting my faith and trust in God, 
and asking God to rescue me from all the mistakes I've made. Watch him do it. Climb as well. Now, I may not be up there where you think I ought to be, and I may not talk the way you think I ought to talk, but the God I serve delivered me from so many mistakes I had made, college being one of them. What better testament, what better story can I tell? Don't let people put you in the box just because that's the box that they jumped out of. That ain't your box. That ain't your route. That ain't your journey. That ain't your ticket. You have got to put your faith in God and understand that all of us are on a different journey in life. Ain't nobody traveling the exact same path and the exact same footsteps as nobody. I have admired so many people in this world. I have tried to pattern myself after certain people in this world. But no matter how hard I try, I have found no one who has taken the exact same footsteps as me. And that don't make them better than me, less than me. It just ain't no two people taking the exact same footsteps. Look, I admired Richard Pryor. I admired Muhammad Ali. I admired Martin Luther King. I admired Michael Jordan. I admired Gandhi. I admired Mother Teresa. I admired Bishop T.D. Jakes. I admired Bishop Geddes. I admired Joel Osteen. I admired Bishop Kenneth Olmer. I admired Donnie Kirk Kirkland. I admire a lot of people. But they footsteps ain't mine. Not the exact footsteps. I can learn from some things they've all taught me. I can learn from some things I've watched them do. But at the end of the day, this is your journey. Your journey as, is as unique as your fingerprint. And that's how special God made each and every one of us because we all got a different fingerprint. It's billions, over 7 billion people in this world. Ain't no two people got the same fingerprint. So how the two of you gonna take the same steps? You better, you better listen to this. It ain't your journey. It ain't your path. Get on your path. Get on your journey. Get on your faith. Get on your knees and accomplish your job, your dreams. Make your dreams come true. Follow your heart. Follow your goals. Follow your imagination. God is good and he can get you there. And nowhere does it say a man without an education shall fail. It says a man without a dream or a vision shall perish. Dust them off, handle your biz. Those are my closing remarks. Y'all have a great week. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. Are you ready for a brand new podcast that you had no idea existed? I'm Roy Scovel. And I'm Daniel Van Kirk. And it's the Pen Pals Podcast. Maybe you've had a pen pal before. Well, you have two of them right now. You send us your letters about anything going on in your life. Got a mean grandma? Need a new haircut? Whatever it is, send it to us. And we have guests like Will Ferrell, Andy Samberg, Rose Byrne, Brett Goldstein, and Mandy Moore. Listen to the Pen Pals Podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Are you hungry for the inside scoop of women's soccer? I'm Sam Lewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And we're professional soccer players, best friends, and the hosts of Snacks, the only women's soccer podcast hosted by active players that gets into the most recent news, gossip, and fun of the NWSL, the women's national team, and the delightful, delicious world of Snacks. It's a weekly show that features great guests from the world of women's soccer, recaps and previews of the biggest matches, and the two of us hanging out with you. Listen to Stacks on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up, y'all? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. I'm going to help y'all learn how to cook and bake new things as we get to know our guests through their favorite nostalgic meal. If you are ever at a place in your life where things are too busy or your head gets too big, having a meal like this, it reminds you of who you were and also who you still are. Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to The Good Stuff. I'm Jacob Schick, a third-generation combat Marine. 
And I'm his co-host and wife, Ashley Schick. We believe everyone has a story to tell, not only about the peaks, but the valleys they've been through to get them to where they are today. We're joined by some amazing guests who share the lessons they've learned that shaped who they are and what they're doing to pay it forward and give back. Listen to The Good Stuff on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.